projecting light. With light projection we mean a light source that shines on the surface. Here is an example. We have a 2D face as a screen and a square spotlight with a gale which is projected on the screen. Screen, spotlight and gale have the same aspect ratio of 5 to 4. The size of the spot and the distance to the screen were adjusted so that the picture falls on the screen and the board remains. This is the spot, this is the 2D face. The backdrop is an HDRI that also casts light. The room is too bright for a slideshow and we note a low contrast. The screen is full white and has 100 diffusion. The light has diffuse at 4, has no fall off and the gale is just a photograph. The HRI has quite a high HRI effect at 750 and casts a lot of light. The screen is included and receives the light from the HRI. Since the HRI is used, that brightens the screen undesirably, we can just exclude it from receiving IB light. Screen. Now the screen doesn't receive light from the HRI. The contrast is somewhat better, but we note that we have not enough brightness Therefore, we increase diffuse from 4 to 6. We can also render in scene. You can see the difference right here from 4 to 6. And now this looks quite nice. If the interfering light is not from a HRI, or we cannot dim it, We have another option. Reduce screen diffusion from 100 to 1. And move up diffuse from 6 to 600. Then it just doesn't matter whether we have included the screen or excluded it from receiving light from the HRI because the screen is very unresponsive to light. This is probably not very new news to you. Let us therefore proceed to project light around us, not just on a screen in front of us. In order to do that, we need a screen that is all around us a sphere with the camera in the center. We have a sphere with diffusion at 100 and full white. It has 20% transparency, but this doesn't matter at this moment because the sky is set full black, atmosphere off, and it is full black. The camera is inside the sphere and a bit offset the center, rendered as a 360 degree panorama. So we can see more or less everything here. The HDRI is room from the Tourbillon series and it is used as light from inside. What we see in the render are only some blurred dark and white spots, mostly blue because of the sky. Whatever HRI you use as light from inside, it will be diffuse convolved, moving up quality from 16 to 4096 is a small step for the render quality, but a giant leap for render time. If you use a spectrum and add to sky, 
which is black. And render, we understand where the light comes from. This was the reason to set the sphere to 20% transparent. We can see the panorama of the room. We can create a sphere. And we see the light. Though we have the shadow from the sphere, now we have to switch off cast shadows. Then we can see the light comes from the HRI. I switch the backdrop off and there is no change. The light is from the inside and is coming from right this spot. This is all not very exciting because there is not enough resolution except the surrounding sphere is made partly transparent, perhaps. A sphere was added and given a pattern for transparency. That's just a pattern for transparency. The sphere is in the world center and surrounds the HRI from inside. The pattern on the sphere is projected on the spherical screen. Here the sphere is visible. If you do not want it visible, it can be scaled down to 0.001 without any effect on the screen. The HDRI from inside is smaller than that. 0 0.001 0 0.001 0 0.001 It's very, very tiny. There is no difference in the render. The HRI from inside is even smaller than that. Because of the very coarse spatial resolution of the HRI from inside, it has limited use for projecting an image on a screen. It does have other uses though. This video is about projecting light. So, we have the alternative to use a radial light as light source. Here we have our sphere as projector screen, set to white diffuse and 100 diffusion. Surrounding the radial is another sphere with a gill. I used a rainbow pattern from David's Material Project Rainbow Sphere 4 video. There are two modifications. We need transparency, otherwise the light is trapped within the sphere. If transparency is used, the light from the radial lights the screen with the color it was set, white in this case. Second, we need transparent color as well. Then we get the gill. Again, Without transparency, the light is trapped within the sphere. We switch this just off. We have an interesting render, that at least it renders fast. So we need transparency and we need the transparent to color the light that is shining through this sphere. And then we get what we look for. Not that anything I told you so far is wrong. Unfortunately, I didn't pay attention to a little detail David was kind enough to point out to me. Going back to the materials lab from here, for the gel sphere, I went on and on telling you that we have to use these controls for the transparency, which is not entirely correct. It is not wrong, as we have proved in the video and I will go on about it in the future of this video but when we look here we have the alpha channel set and the alpha channel for those is gray that is 50% that would be the same thing as if we would set transparency to 50% and then we get the same effect for this setup. We may even go up to 100. 
and then we have to reduce the light and the radial to 5 and have the same render. So I think it is important to note that this little detail, though what I said is not completely wrong, but it might confuse you, and since this is a tutorial, we want to have it correct in every part. So please, in the future of this video, when I point out, I have to use these three dots in the transparency channel. Think about it that you can also set just transparency higher up and do not need these dots in this case. Well, okay, sorry about that. A note about the diffuse and the radial, it is set to 10. You can double this value to 20 and reduce diffusion for the screen to 50%. We double that, we use the screen and set diffusion to 50. Double the light and half diffuse, and then we get the same amount of light. Alternatively, we can step up to 100 and set diffuse to halfway down, 27, so this RGB 127. And this has the same effect. There is no change. It may come in handy to know that these values correspond exactly, not only here, always. Remember that we set at the beginning the spotlight from 6 to 600 why we reduce diffusion from 100 to 1. Light diffuse only accepts integers, no reals or fractions. This means 1, 2, 5, 10, but not 2.5, 10.75 or so. This can be compensated either by diffuse color or the diffusion value for the material. The textures use the spherical mapping mode which is the most logical for a sphere. Unfortunately, there is a minor flow that is sometimes visible and sometimes not, a one pixel wide line at the equator. We may see when we start rendering again here, this one pixel wide line. If this flow is visible, use parametric mapping. Instead of spherical, use parametric. However, the texture is rotated 90 degrees clockwise when looked at the sphere from the outside or 90 degrees counterclockwise if the camera is within the sphere. In our case, we can then simply rotate the sphere by 90 degrees to compensate for that. Well, let's just check that parametric, parametric, parametric and once again parametric. If we render, it is different. And now we rotate this sphere to y minus 90 degrees, render again and we are back at the beginning. We have compensated that. Here we have just an extension of what we had before. There are three gill spheres with three different textures from David's material project rainbow sphere 4 video. In the center there is a fainter radial. Left and right are two round spotlights. The left one shines to the left and the right one to the right. They are set to be very wide and have full edge softness and there are also brighter. This is again a 360 degree panorama render. Here is just one of the spheres, the right one, the gill, 
sphere and the spot which looks like a line here because it is white and it is high but it has no depth at all so it is almost a 180 degree shining spot shining in this direction and this is how this spot is set diffuse at 150 it has linear fall off it does cause shadow and edge softness is at 100 and this is the same for the left one now the center one is a radial and it has only 50 diffuse linear fall off having a look at the gill spheres so this is the center sphere it has this material the one from David's video we have added transparent colors these three and we also have added transparency the sphere at left has another pattern also we have transparent and transparency set to these three texture channels finally the one to the right which has again another pattern again set this way the edge softness of the spotlights can be noticed here and what we have in the background the darker part is what is coming from this gill in the center with the radial and this brighter part at the left comes from the spotlight shining to the left and this part comes from the spotlight shining to the right generally this is the same setup as before but for the screen i added bump and anisotropy radial and tangent mapped and conforming to the y-axis let's have a look our sphere we have gray full diffusion we have specularity but no specular halo we have bump height we took from this layer and we have anisotropy set to radial mapping tangent mapping and conform to the y-axis and this is giving us these additional lines and also those bright spots around the radial inside the center gale sphere this looks more interesting than the previous one even though it is generally the same render what is this light projecting and gale thingy good for your image will tell you no change here as far as the gill spheres the spotlights and the radial lights are concerned but the screen has changed the screen is a symmetrical lattice this one was used and the material it is gray it has specularity specular hollow it has anisotropy set this time to planar mapping tangent mapping and conforming to the c axis it has also been rendered as a 360 degree panorama the hot spots from the spotlights look quite out of place in this render rendering as a panorama has the advantage to show everything there are some interesting parts around the center rotate and tilt the perspective camera to show one of the interesting parts mind that the symmetrical lattice is gray in color all colors come from the three gills used this is just one idea what could be done you will come up with something better and more surprising if you populate the inside of the screen with objects do not forget that you can exclude selected objects separately from receiving light from any of the light sources to round this tutorial up here we have a fairy landscape we only have added a bit of bump specularity diffusion diffuse is white and that's all on this landscape but we have here above still our three gills the same as we had for this video just turn them a little bit round 
All the colors come from the gill apply to the lights visible above and a little bit of sunlight to brighten up the parts that were in the shadow. Just let's come back to the previous render and see what can be done with it when the camera is set differently. This is the picture with the interesting part in it. All the colors come from the light gills used on the two spotlights and the radial in the center. There are no other colors used. Though whether this is a nice render or not, that's you to judge. And whether the gills I've used were ideal is still another matter, but I hope you got the idea what you can use by projecting light onto a background and have fun with it.